Two years ago, I loaded up my electric 13-foot Boston Whaler with every battery I could find and set off to see just how far it could go. After 14 hours of non-stop motoring, I finally gave up because it was getting really late at night. The boat had traveled 50 miles, but based on the battery capacity on board, I calculated that it should have been able to go about 100 miles. That might sound pretty good for an electric boat, but it's actually pretty bad. Reason being is that this hull shape is made for stability at high speeds. It's not made to go slow at displacement speeds. In this video, I'm going to follow the same route with this 14-foot carbon fiber catamaran I built last year. Its hull shape is designed for efficiency, so it will be interesting to see how much faster it can complete the route and how much less power it will consume while doing so. Okay, it's time to go. I'm going to just gently shove off here. 6.30, so these just lower down. Okay, turning on the radio, plugging in the batteries. The motor should go now. Motors don't go. Let's, oh, there they go. Haha, <laughs> throttle up and we are underway. Going right into a buoy. But I have this little knob set up to trim so I can just raise the throttle like that. It's pretty glassy out here. It would be awesome if it stays this way for the rest of the day, but I think the wind will pick up late morning or early afternoon. But for now, this is great. I'm just steering with my little joystick over here. So obviously if I know how much power these motors pull at any given speed, I can just calculate the range. But what I'm gonna try and do today is keep the speed up as high as possible. And ideally I would arrive back at the boat ramp, you know, with like, 0% left in the batteries. <laughs> I know this boat will go like several hundred miles, so the question is how fast can I go 50 miles? We are now passing Seward Park. This is kind of a big peninsula that's a park here. And I got strawberries! There's a walking and biking trail along here. So I'm just paralleling the shore. Ooh, there's a rope swing. That looks fun. So I'm going 10 kilometers per hour right now, and at this speed it will take me about seven and a half hours to go the full length of the lake. So now the question is, will the batteries support this speed? Luckily, this battery has a very smart BMS in it, and it's telling me my estimated runtime at this power level is nine hours. So that's good, that gives me uh, seven, eight, nine, that's two hours of extra margin. That seems good, so I guess I can stay at this power level. Although it is possible that I'll have to throttle down later when the lake gets bumpier, because when it's choppy, waves just come right over this boat. It's definitely not a good boat for bumpy water, so we'll see. Hopefully I can hold this speed all day. There sure are some pretty nice houses along here that's the dream right there to have a boat garage look at that thing holy crap that's a big one amazing this is the megan made by voyage systems and it logs all the telemetry data from the vesk onto an sd card in here so i'll be able to see my efficiency and all that stuff later on instantaneous efficiency right now is 16.7 watt hours per kilometer we're going at a pretty good clip here 6.2 miles per hour or probably more like 6.5 miles per hour we're moving right along through this episode of luxury home tour with rc test flight now that's the way to flex on all your neighbors with boats you just get a plane that's the dream right there that is sweet Look at that, there's some teenage geese. Oh, and there's a big chicken. Uh-oh, we might have a wake coming up. I think these are the poor people lake houses. They're only like three or four million compared to the, the $20 million ones back there. Oh, I gotta slow down. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, throttling back up. That wasn't so bad. Oh, there's a nice little boat house. I could build a ground effect vehicle in there. That's a nice trawler. You could live on that. We're at the Renton Airport now. This is where they drive the seaplanes into the water. Gliding across the lake on my little catamaran is such a pleasant experience. It's like the exact opposite of battling your way through the US healthcare system, which can be so aggravating. A few months ago, I switched health insurance companies and having to find all new in-network doctors was such a pain. I really wish I would have known what I know now, and that is that there's a much easier way to find healthcare providers than just cold calling random doctors and asking if they take your insurance. And that thing that I wish I would have known about is ZocDoc, who is the sponsor of this video. Nowadays, whenever I need to book an appointment of any type, I go straight to ZocDoc. ZocDoc is a free website where you can easily search for and compare in-network providers to find the one that is best for you. And ZocDoc isn't just for one type of care. They have more than 100,000 providers across nearly every specialty, from primary care to dental health to eye care to urgent care to mental health and more. It really is the one-stop shop for all your healthcare needs. There's no need to call doctor's offices and wait on hold either. ZocDoc lets you do everything online. With ZocDoc, you can filter for doctors by insurance, locations, specialties, 
And you can even see reviews from verified patients to make sure that you're finding the doctor that is the best suited for you and the most convenient. And when you found the doctor you need, you can see their actual appointment openings, which makes scheduling so much easier. Plus, ZocDoc helps you get appointments fast, typically within 24 to 72 hours of booking. And you can even score same day appointments. Stop waiting and start getting the care you need. Go to ZocDoc.com slash RCTestFlight to find and instantly book a top rated doctor today. There's some logs in the water up here. I think this is a river delta. Last time I came over here with the electric Boston whaler, I got stuck in seaweed, so I gotta be careful. Look at all those ducks on a log. Oh yeah, it's super shallow through here. Whoa, look at all those bubbles. The heck is that? There's nothing there. It, those bubbles were just coming out of the ground. It must be like snails or something, but that's a lot of gas coming out as a little animal. Ooh, there's some fish. I wish I had a polarized lens filter for this camera. Whoa, 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 look at that, a whole school of giant fish. This is where Boeing paints the planes? Or they do something here, I don't know. Look at that, you could lease an apartment right next to a jumbo jet. You can see it every day. Look at that seagull. He's looking for breakfast. Wow. Bye. There's the city of Bellevue coming into view. So this is Mercer Island straight ahead, and we're gonna go around this way. We came from that way. Looks like they got their own neighborhood boat ramp there. That's pretty cool. Wow, that's a nice boat garage. Still moving. The moon is out. Wow, look at that falcon. These things almost look like hotels. Those dudes have got a hydrofoil back there. Wow, they got their own water trampoline. That's pretty cool. These are the propellers that won the RC Test Flight Propeller Design Competition. You really can't just take a propeller that wins the competition with one motor and slap it on a different motor and expect to have the best performance, but they do seem like they're working pretty well on these motors. A little old rundown house with a trawler out front. I wonder who lives there. There's a seaplane getting ready to take off. I've definitely seen this barge going across Lake Washington before. I think I chased it with my drone once. They must be putting in new pier pilings or something. I think they might keep the seaplane in that hangar right there. Whoa, that's pretty cool. Oh yeah, they just drove the plane right out of the water. It must have wheels. And we're coming up on the I-90 bridge. Looks like there's a lot of people stuck in traffic on their early morning commute. Bummer. Wow, that's an interesting place. It's very modern. That's a cute little tugboat. They got firefighting hoses on the front there. That's interesting. This guy must be coming back from a weekend at the San Juan Islands or something. Okay, now we're down to 80% capacity with an eight hour and 24 minute estimated runtime. And it's almost nine o'clock, so I've been going for like two and a half hours. All right, we're doing pretty good. When I'm going down a wave, the nose totally digs in. The whole thing goes underwater. Not a choppy water boat. So the whole speed for this boat is about five, uh, let's see, 5.76 miles per hour or 9.2 kilometers per hour. And we're going 11 kilometers per hour. So we are exceeding the whole speed, which means it should get really inefficient after you exceed the whole speed. But these holes are so long and narrow that the, the whole speed rule doesn't apply as much. You can exceed the whole speed pretty easily. I keep, oh man, I keep picking, oh shit, I got seaweed in the prop. I gotta throttle down here and get rid of that. I got the drone with me here, so I might as well send it up. Bye. this is where one of the former richest men in the world lives. Now that is a nice boathouse right there. The hillside is so steep they can't go up and down to get to their boathouse so they have to put in a funicular. It's like a gondola 
except it's on rails instead of a cable. We are approaching the SR520 floating bridge. This whole bridge floats on big concrete barges. I think I bought a hydrofoil from someone in one of these houses. There's another cute little tugboat pushing a crane barge. There's the city of Seattle poking up in the distance. This is something I should have done a long time ago, but I'm gonna build a little tape dam right here so that the water that flows onto the hull can't just go straight into the battery compartment. But that looks like it'll work, other than the fact that painter's tape is not waterproof. That's the Magnuson Park boat launch right there. And where I am right here is the location of the PBY Mariner that sank. Sebastian and I dove to it with our ROVs, if you remember that back from a few years ago. So I am about 140 feet above a big crashed World War II bomber. Pretty crazy. Just gliding along through the water. Still pretty calm out, but the wind has definitely picked up a little bit. Whoa, that dude's throwing down. I just changed around the trim mix I have in the radio. I'm using this knob right here to control the throttle. But anyways, I increased it, so now I have... Well, so now I'm doing 300 watts per motor at full chooch. The estimated runtime is still six hours, so I think we'll be fine. And our speed is a solid 11 kilometers per hour. Whoa, there's the moon and an airplane. Not a great day for sailing. There's a bunch of little sailboats out there, but there's no wind. It would be nice if this boat had a bimini top, but an umbrella is all I got. Big wake coming up. Whoa! We're at the north end of the lake now. This is kind of a long skinny finger that goes up to the city of Kenmore. That's our northernmost point before we'll turn around and head back south. Wow, the maintenance costs on that must be crazy. We're going with some waves now, so these bows should dive right here. Yeah, going deep. That old cat needs some TLC. Whoa, that was a big wave that just slapped the bottom of the deck. <laughs> Here's the seaplane base. Doesn't look like any are taking off right now though. Well, time to turn around. There's a seaplane taking off and another one landing at the same time. Touchdown. Here's a big old barge moored there. It looks like it's full of pier pilings. It's super shallow. Oh man, that wave went over hard. It's really shallow right here. I bet the props are gonna pick up something. Oh yeah, we got a lot of stringers back there. Yep, it's not too smooth out here anymore, but we're doing fine. Hopefully it doesn't get any more windy. That old house has a boat underneath it. That's pretty cool. It's time for a little pumping action. And bam, look at that. Wow, it's pretty shallow right here. That is so weird for whatever reason. It's just completely flat on this side. And on the other side, it's super wavy. This beach is gonna be so packed later today. This will give you an idea of why displacement holes are so great at low speeds. If I turn my throttle down to seven kilometers per hour, my estimated runtime is now 15 hours. So this boat will go for way longer if I just reduce the speed a bit, but I'm gonna throttle back up because I don't wanna be out here all day. There's the dive boat with Rainier in the background. I've got some big rollers behind me here, so I'm trying to surf them. 17 kilometers per hour, damn. I'm peeing. There is not a lot of clearance between the deck and the water. <laughs> it's amazing I don't hit more waves against here. I thought that was a whale watching boat. Why the heck are they going out on the lake? Pontoon boats cannot be trusted. Here we go, under the bridge. That's some parallax for you. What a shot. Damn! That's another good shot of that boat. Damn, I should try and sell them this footage. Oh, oh man. Look at that, I just went down a wave, whoa. Whoa, 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 what's going on? Stop, stop, stop. That was sketch. I'm, I'm diving, man. For a second I thought I was sinking. <laughs> that thing was riding real low in the water, but I think it's just because I was going down a wave. Someone should really trim that ivy, that's an invasive species. There's another hotel-sized house. I really thought this was gonna be a brutal trip back upwind, but it's not. Oh yeah, look at that, oh yeah, oh yeah. There's an apple, someone lost their apple. All these people must not have jobs. Damn hippies, they should be working hard like me. Got more damn hippies over here. We are now at 42% and our estimated empty time is three hours and 54 minutes. And the boat ramp is just on the other side of that bridge. So I'm gonna throttle up even more here. 13 kilometers per hour at 315 watts. Our estimated runtime is two hours and 42 minutes. Yeah, I could go faster, but I'm not going to. But I could, let's go faster for just a sec. 18 kilometers per hour. Estimated runtime is one hour and six minutes. Power is a thousand watts. We're crushing now, woo -hoo. This thing is a 
a speedboat now. So many layers and layers of houses. Uh, oh, wow, wow, wow. There's the boat ramp. The end is near. We're cruising now. That's where I flew the drone this morning. Way over there. Oh man, my tape dam is just getting knocked right over. Oh man, big waves, big waves. Oh, ho, ho. easy boy. Mission successful. I am back. Let's stop our Strava here. So according to the Megan here, we did 66.7 kilometers, averaging 19.4 watt hours per kilometer over the course of six hours and 56 minutes. My average speed was 5.3 knots. Oh yeah, you can totally see that I started going way faster at the end, but for the most part, I was holding around six knots. We're at 34%. So I could probably go another 50 15 miles if I'd stretched it out and went slower. Pretty, pretty good. If I had gone really slow for this whole trip, I bet I could go way further, like 100 miles or 200 miles even. If we compare the new catamaran to the old electric Boston Whaler, the catamaran's energy consumption is roughly half as much, while going almost twice as fast, so it's really a huge improvement. If we take the efficiency versus speed data I collected in the last video and use that to compare the catamaran and the Boston Whaler at the same speed, then the catamaran comes out at almost 12 times more efficient than the Boston Whaler, which is pretty crazy. This isn't a great comparison though because the Whaler has a lot more displacement, so it should really be thought of as a much bigger boat, even though its footprint is one foot smaller, and it had less efficient propellers. But still, it's a huge difference. This little catamaran is super great for cruising around the lake when it's calm, but I definitely wish I would have made the hulls a bit taller so that it can handle more weight and rougher waters. I've thought about using these hulls as outriggers, or AMAs as they're called, for a bigger trimaran, but that's a project for the future. I'm nowhere near starting on that yet. I need to find a bigger workshop first. I built these catamaran hulls in my garage and they just barely fit, so I'm going to need a bigger space to build anything larger. But the goal for the trimaran would be to make it solar powered and go on multi-day voyages. Anyways, that's all for this video. I have some cool stuff for sale on my website these days. There are these PCB hydrofoil masts that automatically measure the water level and control the ride height of an RC hydrofoiling boat. And there's the color shadow lamp. It has three discrete LEDs that make white light where all the lights merge but the white light splits into all the colors of the rainbow when any shadows are cast. It's a pretty cool effect, and it's super fun to play around with. Both of these things are available at the links in the description. Thanks for watching. Bye.